it's that time of the year again. I have to pretend that I care what actually happens to the meta of this game or what actually is meta to an extent. Dude, it's rare that I find a meta deck that I actually enjoy. Rescue Ace was like a pretty rare case. Um, You can ask anyone that like knows me. I'm usually like the fucking rogue guy. I will play anything that is rogue for the longest amount of time. And if I really like the game or if I really like a rogue deck, then I'll research the meta around it. But for the most part, I'm very impartial as to what actually stays meta. And Rescue Ace just happened to be a deck that I really enjoyed, like, because Turbulence Set 4 was funny. I do still think I could play Rescue Ace now, but I sold my one it's early to avoid the drop in price because it is an investment market as well at the end of the day. So I didn't want to hold on to them and then all of a sudden lose a bunch of money that I could have gotten because I held on to a piece of cardboard. Well, it's like Yu-Gi-Oh is my job basically now, but it, at the end of the day, I don't put my pride over my actual card investments uh, if anything if wanted to get any lower like this list actually hits wanted i'll definitely get back into them but just so i can play rescue Ace again but otherwise i'm waiting until the mega tins and then i'm picking up rescue Ace again what should be hit in this format in terms of representation at events you could argue that snake eye is tier zero i just think this is one of the weakest tier zero decks that we've ever gotten because it's not oppressively unfair and it being the modern game, we have a lot of answers for things. Now, that being said, starting with the banned cards, fuck a flame burge. Get it out of the game. I don't want this card to continue being in the game. I think, like, there is an argument that, like, Snake Eyes or Fire as a whole has been severely overtuned in the past year, and there's no need for any more fire support. Like, once we got Promethean Princess, it was like, <laughs> you know, like, did we take this shit too far? With Flame Burge, it's a crazy resource loop that Snake Eyes gets because of this card, and it doesn't matter which variant you're on, uh, whether it be pure Snake Eye or Fire King. And this is why Rescue Ace has a di disadvantage compared to those two decks, because being able to actually resolve Flame Burge Dragon in any given hand is actually insane because Flameberg not just allows you to set up for going into Princess and then setting up, you know, Princess plus Amble Whale or SP or Apo, but it also is an insane resource loop in terms of being able to get monsters back from either player's graveyard once per turn. And then it just allows you to get stuff back like IP, SP, just about like any monster in the game you can get back for with Flameberg. And it's essentially in its in the turn that it resolves it's essentially a plus three because it gets you back the two cards that you use to summon it which you weren't really going minus for anyway and then you get back the link or possible um other kind of monster that you want from your graveyard just during your opponent's turn you get to summon it back it's really crazy and this is the card that makes snake eyes like really really strong the deck can exist without this card like the deck can still play around hand traps they may have to lean more into the fire king side but they can still play around hand traps they can still make uh boards it's just the game states that are created by flame Burge are just absolutely stupid to the fact where they don't even need omnis they just need flame Burge to resolve and even if you negate flame Burge, it's like it, it's just too layered right like it's just too layered between like the hand traps field and graveyard to the point where there is no like one card solution to anything that they're doing you, you need multiplicity of cards you know you, you need a, a array of different texts and cards to really beat snake eyes at the game in this format and that's why it's so hard to beat them so release was a good tech but no one's maining that right like you can't main so release game one into snake eye can be really taxing against your engine if you're not opening the right hand traps if you're not opening the perfect cards against this deck it's a really annoying card and i think flame Burge is the one card that needs to be hit you can keep wanted in diabell star i know legacy of destruction comes with more diabell star support so i don't think hitting diabell star is necessarily like you don't need to hit diabell star but uh, i think flame Burge all in all is like the biggest one to hit hitting this i think will literally put snake eyes down a tier i think they already have more than enough with princess with poplar with temple they have more than enough support to still make it in the meta without this card giving them like plus three every single turn you know so next we have ghost meets girl 
And this is a little hypocritical because I am a Ghost Meets Girl user. I use Beatrice Rollback Ghost Meets Girl because it's funny. But I feel like for the health of the game moving forward, we should get rid of all turn skips. All turn skips should just get out of the game because why, why do these exist? Like these have no reason to exist other than just to be annoying. I don't think this is healthy for the game in any sort of capacity, and I just can't see a reason for this to stay in. Rollback, I mean, has a bunch of different options that aren't this stupid. You know, you have like DDG, you have like Labyrinth. Like you could hit Rollback, I guess you could say, but Rollback's too new. I don't think they're gonna hit Rollback. So you can get rid of Ghost Meets Girl, Rollback's fine. Beatrice and Roback is fine. Harpy's Fetterstorm, Snake Eyes gets this hit. There is a chance Flanderese might actually start to take over again. So I want to get rid of the problem card before it continues. And I don't think this card should have been allowed in the game to begin with. I know it's not that like broken of a trap card and it's not really searchable either, but I don't think like not being able to activate monster effects for two turns is in any way shape or form a well-designed card this is like shifter for monster effects so floundries has access to shifter and to a monster effect shifter it just doesn't make sense it eradicator right the same reason for fetter storm if we hit snake eyes and more people are like hmm let me go back to labyrinth this card shouldn't exist even with the new archetypes coming in legacy destruction and an infinite forbidden i don't think this card should be around i think it gives dark decks a little too much power. Like it'll give you bell if they end on any of their bigger bodies or the new uh, rank 10 coming out of Legacy of Destruction. It gives them a little too much power. I just don't think this card should be in any healthy game state. Raid Raptor as well. They can already uh, make two towers and then imagine being able to tribute a towers just to fucking uh, basically anti-spell you or get rid of all, it, it, most people usually call spell, right? So it's it's basically anti-spell, except all your spells actually get destroyed. Well, sort of like a royal tribute, like a royal tribute anti-spell. It just make it make sense. So moving on with turn skips, right? Albion is another one I feel like needs to get hit. Even before this gimmick puppet support got revealed, because I feel like people are kind of five-heading this, the logic behind hitting Albion, because they're like, oh, well, you know, gimmick puppets are getting support, so now you can hit Albion. It's like, you never should have hit Puppet to begin with. Because by hitting this, all you're really doing is making cards like this being put, you know, you just put this into Branded now. It, it's it, it's a different, you know, you, you, they they can lose Nightmare, but the, the, the deck kit will still be doing the exact same thing. Like, sure, this loses to Droplet. That's just one card, right? Like it still loses to Biss deals and stuff, right? It still loses to all the same things, but it loses to like one or two more things. It doesn't actually solve the problem that you're basically getting turn skipped if you didn't draw the out. I just think getting rid of Albion, I don't know why they said, why they put this card can't be targeted on this card because it, it makes no sense to give such a broken card a targeting immunity, but here we are. Branded is perfectly fine without this card. They could still mirror jade loop you. They could still play through hand traps. It's like this, this is really just an end piece for Branded that doesn't actually add anything to the strategy except for free wins. It only gives Branded free wins. That's all it does. Um, it doesn't actually help the strategy in any meaningful way. The same thing for Flameberg. I don't think Flameberg adds anything meaningful to the Snake Eye strategy. It just, it just, it, it just gives you like three or four more bodies. King Calamity, let's be real. Centurion's about to get more support. Manadium, people have stopped playing it, but it's still a deck. It's still usable, it's still possible. And if we lowered the strength of some of the top decks at the moment, there's a very good chance you're might gonna you're gonna see more of this guy, assuming that he stays in the format. So let's just all do ourselves a favor, get rid of it while we still can. Centurion's gonna be fine. They have two level 12 synchros, they have Cosmic Blazar. They really don't need this card to play the game in any meaningful way. Even even that TG player, right? The the there's a guy playing TG Horus, and he didn't have Calamity in his list. He had Blazar, and I was really happy about that because I'm like, dude, this is like one of the first people to top with TG post Phantom Nightmare, or was it pre Phantom Nightmare? Actually, no, it was post post Phantom Nightmare and fucking no Calamity. That was beautiful. I love that shit. 
So please keep this thing out of the game. Don't let people play this shit because this is just too stupid. It's just too stupid. I know you can side in cosmics. It's like, yes, you can side in stuff to beat it, but that's, that's not the point. The point is, is that it's inherently one-sided assuming you don't open one of your 15 hand traps. Cool. You lost the game. That's not good card design. And then DDD Duel Donkey Kaliuga. I will preach this until the end of the day. This card should not be allowed to continue being in the game. I don't care if it sucks in DDD <laughs> because it's really hard to summon in like actual DDD during your opponent's turn. But in Raid Raptor, um, they can just summon this thing out at the end of their combo during your turn. I'm like it's no big deal. So. I don't think this card should be allowed to exist in the modern metagame at all, and uh, I never want to see this card in a tournament. Like, if I'm faint placing off against Raid Raptor, I never want to see this card. Like, if this card comes up in a tournament, I'm actually going to fucking flip. So now let's go to our limited cards, cards I think should either go to one or should come back to one. And you're going to see a lot of hot takes in this one area right here, so that's why I'm taking a minute to pause before you guys see this shit so that, you know, you, you don't fucking jump with a heart attack. Uh, number one, Shifter. Now, OCG, I believe, semi-limited Shifter. And since then, you haven't really seen it as much in OCG. But I think limiting or semi-limiting the card make it makes Shifter a lot less effective because essentially it's like... Either you open this and you're opening five or opening six, or you're just done. Like it, this, this card is just done. It missed its chance. There's no chance that like a card like Shifter is going to be relevant after turn one or turn two. And I think by limiting the card, you effectively remove people's want to use it. It's kind of like Gamma. It's like Gamma is still as strong as it was back in Super Heavy format right when it was like super heavies was a best deck super heavy and Kashira. when it was super heavy and Kashira, shifter was still one of the strongest cards in the game gamma was still one of the strongest cards in the game and gamma was the only way to beat shifter and since then we've needed shifter in the format because there's too many decks that rely on graveyard by banishing all that shit you make those decks a lot less effective so i think hitting shifter now will be a good way to sort of balance things out right like you can ban Flameberg. I know some people are talking about ban Link Karibo, ban original Simple Spoils. I don't think those are going to get hit yet. I think if the deck is a problem without Flameberg, then you can still hit those cards. But let's see how the deck plays without Flameberg first. And let's just get rid of Shifter. It's a toxic card. I know I already banned Fetterstorm, so Flandry's players are going to be crying. They've lost every Floodgate now. <laughs> I mean, they can still play DDG. It's not better in Flanderies, but it's like a better card. It's a more consistent card going first anyway, because it's a lot more reactive and it's harder for your opponent to like plan around. Like your opponent can plan around a shifter. It's hard to plan around like a fucking DDG at like the right moment. Once once we hit Snake Eye, your job is no longer needed. Abyss deals exist for voiceless, and I don't think the graveyard of Snake Eyes is still gonna be that crazy. But I mean I can understand, right? Like they still have a lot that they can use in Grave Raptor. Like, maybe it could force people to play Macro instead of Shifter, and maybe that's a healthier design choice because Macro, I feel, is more fair compared to Shifter. At least you can respond to a Macro, or you can, like, try to SP, SP the, the Macro away compared to Shifter. Secondly, I would limit Snake Eye Ash. I think, Yes, banning Flameberg should be enough, but I just want to make sure that this is not a tier zero deck. All things considered, the deck is still hyper consistent, triple wanted, triple Diabel, triple bonfire, triple poplar, and then the one snake eye ash. I don't think anyone can really complain about that. It, it if they are, I I don't know what to tell you. Like, Ash is just too good. It's too good of a starter. Rescue is airlifter and red dog had to get limited last format ash has to get limited this format ash is the card that does too much and even with like uh the fire king stuff like dodging fucking imperms and 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 all this and that i think that will be a lot less relevant if i can imperm let's say a diabel star rather than a snake eye ash right so then they can't link rebo and they can't carry it 
It's only once they get to the Ash, that Ash is, you know, able to play around hand traps only if they open it. But that would require, again, Bonfire or the or original Sinful Spoils to already have resolved to get there. And by that point, if, if they have the Bonfire, I can just roll pretty early on. And then that significantly hurts the combo as well. I think Ash is definitely deserving of a hit on this one. It doesn't have to be banned. You can just leave it at one with all the consistency starters that have got hit to one recently. This would be a good call on Konami's part just for the future of the game. Again, Snake Eyes would still be more than playable. It's still way too overtuned with uh, all the fire support that we've gotten within the past few months. So we keep Snake Eye Flameberg in the game, right? Because we're, we're not banning original. I don't think we're banning Diabell Star, and we're definitely not banning Wanted poster. I think Flameberg is the most likely, or Link Rebo is likely too, but I think hitting Link Rebo is stupid. It, it's, it's only a problem card because of SP. Once you get rid of like what the hell Snake Eyes can do, it's like way less of a impactful card. So that's why I think getting rid of Link Rebo this prematurely is kind of stupid, but yeah. Um, if you keep Flameberg around, there are a few cards that I think effectively do the same thing just for different archetypes. So if Flameberg is allowed to stay, you gotta bring back Master Plan. If Flameberg's allowed to say you gotta bring back Master Plan, Snake Eyes and Spiral kind of do a lot of the same thing in terms of they will not be able to make multiple Omnis, just like Snake Eyes really doesn't really make Omnis. It's really just like a heavy amount of resources and good removal at the right time really could push uh, a deck like Spiral back into the meta. And with Master Plan, even at one, you know, the fact you can mill it, summon it back, and then like link it off or like something uh, simple could really go a long way for a deck like Spiral, even in this format. And I know Fiend Smith is about to come out, and two of the Spirals are Fiends or Light Fiends. I don't know if they'd actually use the Fiend Smith combo. It would definitely be a, a an interesting format if if Spiral were to come back like right now. It would probably also take over the game. Just real talk. Assuming that you don't have any Bestials, like if they have to mill this card instead of summoning it straight from deck, if they have to mill master plan if you don't have any best deals it's like what the fuck are you gonna do right so um i think it may not be the smartest decision to bring master plan back but i think it's okay for master plan to come back if you plan to keep the power creep that flameberg has added to the game Next is Block Dragon. Block Dragon is another one where I think Ad Emancipator gets to dig into this relatively easily with like Gallant Granite, assuming that they just get any two level fours. And then Block Dragon, you know, you link it off or something or synchro it off into a Baron, and then it gets to add you more rocks to your hand. I don't think that's inherently broken anymore. I think this can safely come back to like one or even like two or three copies and not really affect the meta at all because although Ad Emancipator does make Omnis, it does make the gates. It makes, you know, Quakimero Guardian or basically all the Quakimeros. It makes Baron, it makes Crystal Wing, Dragite, it makes actual negates on board. We're still not in a point in the game where I think that's going to be very impactful. Hand trap Ad Emancipator does still lose to hand traps at the right time. It's really only if they if they get lucky with their um with their excavations and getting like guardian or something that they'll be able to play through hand traps. But otherwise I think block dragon would be just fine for the strength of the game as it is right now, assuming that you keep Flameberg. And the final card, assuming that Flameberg is kept in a game that can come back is Magic Specter Unicorn Kieran. And I, the greater Yu-Gi-Oh community has been kind of split on whether Kieran should come back because a lot of people are saying, well, this isn't as broken as like anything Kashdira can do. And then there's the other half of people who are like, well, it's a pendulum monster. It doesn't have to be as broken. It's card mechanic makes up for the fact that it may not be as inherently strong as some of these other tech cards or some of these other problematic cards or somewhat problematic cards. I do believe Unicorn is essentially the same thing as Flameberg, right? You are setting up an interruption, right? Because Flameberg sets back the um, IP or the SP, and then it basically gets to revive it. Whereas Kieran can revive itself, assuming that you have two other pendulums, 
right? If you if you have a pendulum scale, Karen can come back. Whether it bounces itself back to hand or whether it's by battle, it can come back. It's really hard to actually remove Karen from field. And the fact that it has a cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effects, I even talked to a friend about this. I'm like, if they just remove that last sentence, this card would be perfectly fine. A lot of the new Magic Specter support seems built with Karen in mind, and yet Karen has not come back yet. So I think this card is overdue for an errata. I think you just take out the part where it can't be targeted. The destroyed part, I think you can keep as long as it, as long as you get rid of the can't be targeted part, then, you know, I think that's more fair. The impermanent, you can fucking SP it um, at, at the right time. It's a lot easier to deal with if it can be targeted. It's very likely to come back, assuming that an errata is, is around a corner. Next thing is Zodiac Barrage. And this is one that I think is a more of a hot take. Dryden's still banned. Broadbull's still banned. Why is Barrage still banned? Are you guys really scared of like Triple Zeus in this format? Are you scared of Triple Zeus still? I don't think anyone's scared of like multiple Zeus's on board anymore. I don't think Barrage really ne needs to stay on the list. This card can easily come back to like two or three copies and I think not even touch the metagame at all. And I think to mitigate that, you can put Zeus down to one. I, I think that's a fair trade because when you put Zeus down to one, or Zodiac as a whole is a lot less effective because their grind game, without Dryden, their grind game is just summon Zeus, summon Zeus, summon four, five, six material Zeuses. But if you put Zeus down to one and you limit the power of Xeed decks in general, I think that's fine. I think that's a really good trade-off. You get to bring Zodiac back into the picture. And I think Zodiac is the strongest still one of the strongest exceed decks because of its ability to one card exceed and uh that's the problem with i think uh like our sharks and goblin biker and raid raptor that zodiac didn't have a problem with is that in the modern game it's really hard to make a board if every card in your engine requires two plus cards if you cannot get into your combo with just the one card it's really hard to make some significant plays or to like bait your opponent into stopping something and then doing something else. It's really hard to do that. So I think a deck like Zodiac would be able to do that and, and not entirely break the game. It'll, it'll, it'll be able to trade with other decks better, assuming that Barrage gets to come back. And I think Barrage coming back would be perfectly fine for the modern game. So Runic Fountain, uh, I just don't like Runic, right? Uh, Anti-Spell. They limited every Floodgate, Anti-Spell, and uh, Summon Limit were, so, were for some reason not on that list. And now both these Floodgates happen happens to be like two of the best Floodgates in the format. So uh, you know what to do, Konami. You you give them the Floodgate treatment. We, we, we got to call what happened last list with Skill Drain and every Floodgate, the Floodgate treatment. You give these cards the Floodgate treatment. Here come the hot takes, a few more of them. Uh, Prank is Meow Mook. This can come back. DPE is no longer a card. Verde Anaconda is no longer a card. I mean, DPE is still around, but we have a Link DPE now. Verde Anaconda, it was like the last thing that, that you had to do. And in the modern day, I'm really interested to see how Verde Anaconda would do compared to like SP being in the format because DPE and SP are essentially the same card as a different extra deck type. So, I don't know. I think it's okay to let prank kids come back with their little battle butler and and such. I'm really sorry, but this what what do you expect tournaments to do without this thing? I I just don't understand why this is still on the list. Um, we've neutered tournaments to the point where we've gotten rid of the Millers. That 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 was supposed to be the trade off, right? Like we've gotten rid of the Millers. Kikalos can come back now. You can bring Kikalos back. I don't really care, you know, make Rhino Heart an actual starter again, and we can all go home playing the decks that we enjoy, right? Just make Tier Element a starter again, so, uh, make Rhino Heart an actual starter again, so that we can fucking, it, and I'm not saying, like, Tier is bad right now, I just, you know, it's clear that, like, in the format, it's definitely a flawed deck, and there's a lot that like it can't do because Kikalos is, does not exist. So they have to rely on a bunch of random mill cards. They have to hopium on the fact that they may mill into a miller into another miller that actually gets them into something rather than just having something solid. 
in the deck and that i think really overcomplicated deck design and really in in a deck that i feel like should be more straightforward in what it wants to do so that's why i think you should just bring kit back to one just allow the decks to have some lines at least <laughs> some generic lines especially since we're you're about to reprint the pearl Arena. i can imagine kit kalos being a great um reprint in like rarity collection 2 or something i can imagine like maybe the reason why they haven't shown off a lot of rarity collection 2 so far is because they plan to reprint a lot of cards coming back on the list that would be an interesting uh thing for konami to do i don't know and my last card for limited is mx saber invoker um i'm gonna keep it real for you guys i'm not saying dryden should come back but i'm like goblins need something else right like that's why I'm like Barrage or Invoker could be good or even both. I don't think both would even break the game or anything. I would just like to see these cards come back into the modern game just because it feels like a lot of decks just get to do so much off of their extra deck monsters. And the fact that like if you get drolled really early um, in your turn, there is seldom that Goblin Bike can do to really play around that. By giving them a card like Invoker, it, you can give them a stronger grind game and a better end board because now it's like then we can convert into like Zodiacs or we can convert into a bunch of other um, monsters that can potentially help our strategy. I just feel like Invoker would really be fine in the game and no one would really, there, there, there really wouldn't be any issues from this card existing. So. I think Invoker can come back because we know what deck's going to like Goblin's the only deck that can play this or Terra Top in something like Zodiac. So that's why I'm like, we, we can bring back the MX Saber Invoker now. Uh, so two ofs, um, Diviner, I don't think Voiceless needs to get hit yet. I'm going to keep it real with you. Like the deck is kind of goofy, the crazy amount of resources that they can keep while making their helmet board is great. I just think maybe small consistency hits. I know we're not really going to hit the engine now yet. Um, not at this point, maybe later on down the line, we may hit the engine, but diviner needs, I think like we, we can afford to hit diviner. I think, uh, this discard has been around for too long. Summoning low from deck is kind of crazy. Hitting it down to two, I think is perfectly fair slap on the wrist like pearly slap on the wrist. The deck is still going to be fine. You're still going to be able to play it at tournaments. People are like, I don't want to hear a single person crying if this hit actually happens because this is not a big deal in the slightest. It's just a small consistency hit just to, just to show voiceless players that they are on a ticking time bomb as well. Like it's not just snake eyes, like voiceless needs to know that as well, but yeah. Uh, Fenrir to two, I can't, like, imagine a world where Fenrir stays at three forever. I think there will be a point where Konami starts to crack down on this card. But the TCG has gotten so wild that going second is almost an impossibility into certain matchups without, like, the right tech cards. So, I think cards like Fenrir mitigate that, and that's the only reason why it's been allowed to stick around, is because we need more going second support just straight up going second kind of sucks sometimes if your dex engine is just like not as competent as your opponent's dex engine um or as well fleshed out right because not every engine has like the most amount of fucking uh possibility like snake eye or some other deck so i feel like fenrir is like the great balancer we don't want to ban the card outright but you can hit fenrir to two because I just think its ability to like replace itself and such is still like, let's just calm that down a bit. Like we don't need to get rid of it by any means. Let's just calm it down a bit. So going to three ofs, I think Pankotrops is a perfect card, right? So it's a perfect trade off, right? You put Fenrir down to two, you put Pank back up to three. I think Pank is more of a balanced card than Fenrir is because Pank at least it gets to swing and then it gets a tribute pop to play around like interruptions and such. And Pank is only useful going second, right? So that's kind of like the the, the trade-off, right? So Pank is only useful going second 
into a board, whereas Fenrir is broken no matter what turn you play it in. Obviously, if you get drolled or nibbed, Fenrir is kind of tough, but if you don't, right, like, it's still a pretty crazy card, and the fact that, like, you can get punished for, like, hand-trapping someone, potentially, when you're staring down a Fenrir is kind of crazy. So, it's a really awkward card to keep at three. Uh, nextly, Malicious. If you want to ban Beatrice, bring this back up to three, I don't mind. If you want to just bring this back up to three, I don't mind. I just... Maybe I'm not seeing the vision that Konami has by keeping this card at two. I don't know what that does, other than just... Because it's only Tiro Mints that's playing this, and they don't really care if it if it's only at one. If they if they only have one engraved, because they'll shuffle it back and make dangerous dangerous overlay with Guru or, or something to make Beatrice anyway. So it's not that big of a deal if Malicious stays at two. I mean, it's not that big of a deal if, if Malicious goes up to three. Um, just real talk. And lastly, Speedward Terratop. So Terratop, it's done nothing since it's come back up to two. I think it's pretty safe to say if it came back up to three, it would do nothing. Maybe the goal is to put Terratop up to three now and then Invoker the next list. Um, and I know some people are asking for like the windups and Mighty. I don't know if the game's ready for that yet. Like Because again, the TCG is a lot different from OCG. And I don't know if bringing a car like that back in a non-maxi format would be okay um even though nibiru exists and we have way more interruptions and stuff now to stop like any sort of awkward ftks or anything so but yeah i mean terror top could be a great card to bring back up to three um help rank three piles or um zodiacs if zodiacs are allowed to come back I don't mind giving Zodiac Invoker and Barrage back as long as Zeus gets limited because then that's just like the one Zeus and that's all you have to deal with. Arguably, even Dryden can come back, but I don't think Dryden is... I, I don't think Dryden Zeus is a healthy way to play the game. Or it's a healthy board state. Like, we tried a few years ago. Dryden just wasn't... We just weren't feeling it. But we also tried Snatch Deal a few years ago. And Snatch Deal got banned immediately. Now Snatch Deal is not a big deal anymore. Now that I now that Esold's banned, so I'm thinking they may potentially experiment with bringing back um, Dryden potentially. I don't know. You know, as long as SP exists, Dryden is like just not that big of a deal. I don't think. And like stacking all your XC materials on one monster that's a hard once per turn, and then like SPing that monster away is gonna feel like so good right so it's i don't know i feel like it, it's a newer format now we can kind of get away with dryden and with barrage and with the zodiac stuff coming back into the game that's my uh very low quality ban list take uh please do not subscribe but like and share the video if you liked it and uh that'll be all